Make it work. You guys stand up. I don't know. We're gonna see. See if I don't get kicked out of the spot here for standing in the middle of a walkway or anything like that. So, for those just tuning in, my name is Michael O'Brien, and today we're gonna talk about how to raise your audience. All right, it's a lot less creepy than that, I promise. Uh, this is not gonna be a video on how to pick up people using magic. I'm not gonna talk about flirting with men or women and doing magic or any of that stuff, right? When I talk about Riz, really what I'm talking about in this video is gonna be your charisma, how you carry yourself during a performance, because believe it or not, the more charismatic and engaging and entertaining you are, uh, the easier it is to get away with performing sleight of hand and the more your audiences are gonna like you. So we're gonna kinda kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, uh, when it comes to <clears throat> working on your charisma. And in this video, all we're gonna do is just talk about different ways that you can do that. My fans are behind me checking out my video here. So, so, <laughs> um, so let's learn about that in this video. Before I get started, I just wanted to remind you guys, you can support the channel by clicking the join button and becoming a member. Uh, you can join for $1, $5, or $100, depending on the membership tier that you choose. There's different options for that. You can check out the membership tab and you can uh, choose the different options for that. You can also subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video or go live. I try to go live every weekend for at least a 20, 30 minutes. I try to do these live because I wanna be able to chat with you guys if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if there's anything that you wanna add that maybe I didn't think of, this is a learning experience for everybody, right? So <clears throat> feel free to do that. Feel free to sound off in the comment section below. Uh, I wanna interact with you guys during those videos. So the first thing that I wanna discuss when it comes to uh, having a confident performance and having that charisma is how you carry yourself, right? How you look, how you present yourself, cleaning your fingernails, trimming your beard and your hair, right? I know I'm getting a little scruffly. I'm getting to that point now where I really need to, <laughs> I really need to get a haircut. And also the way that you dress, right? Now I know that this is a point of contention for some people. And the reason is that <clears throat> I say you need to dress well. And a lot of people equate that to, oh, I need to go out and buy expensive clothing, right? Not necessarily. You don't necessarily have to go out and buy expensive clothing. What you can do instead is buy nice clothing second hand, right? So that's what I like to do. I like to go thrift shopping. You don't wanna buy cheap clothes that are cheap, right? What you wanna do is you wanna buy nice clothes for cheap. That's two different things, right? So honestly, go to your local thrift store. Uh, that suit that you saw me perform on Penn & Teller Fool Us, that three-piece suit, I think I paid like $100 for that suit, right? So you can get a really nice suit uh, for not too expensive. So dressing nice, taking care of yourself, cleaning up, putting on deodorant and taking a shower, <laughs> right? I know this all sounds like obvious stuff, but um, there's a difference, right, between going out and, and performing, wearing ripped clothes and, you know, my hair is unkempt and my breath is bad and, uh, you know, I haven't showered in a couple of days, you know, versus dressing smart, looking clean up, cleaned up, looking taken care of, uh, brushing your teeth before you go out and perform, or carrying Listerine packets or mints or something with you, gum, whatever you need to have yourself smelling all nice and fresh and stuff. These are all first impression things that are gonna go a long way with your audience, right? So that's number one. Number two is preparing your act, preparing yourself uh, for when you go out and perform for people. And the easiest way to do this is to practice, right? Now, when I say practice, it sounds like, obviously, you gotta practice, right? You don't wanna go out into the world performing magic that you just learned a couple days ago and you didn't even really put any reps in. But it goes more than that, right? So when I say practice, I'm really talking about three different things. The first thing is you need to learn the individual slights or techniques that are required to be able to perform the effect, right? So let's just say you're doing an ambitious card routine. You need to learn a card control, you need to control the card at the top. Uh, maybe you need to learn the double lift and um, I don't know, one other slight, right? Let's just say you want the card to go to your pocket at the end, maybe you need to learn how to palm a card. So you need to put your reps in, right? You need to work on your control, whether it be a double undercut or a pass or whatever that is. 
You need to work on your double lift, right? You need to work on that technique so you can hit two cards every time without even having to think about it. And your palm, you need to work on your palm. It needs to look natural. You can't look too forced, any of that stuff, right? Once you've mastered these techniques, now you're ready to put your ambitious card routine together. So what that means now, this is point number two, you need to structure the routine in such a way that you can perform it from start to finish all the way through without messing it up, right? So you've already learned the individual techniques, now you gotta routine everything together. On top of that, you need to uh, script a routine now. You need to write out your script, your patter, your lines, the things that you're gonna say while you're doing the performance, and you need to match those beats up to the things that your hand's doing, right? So you need to be able to run all the way through your whole performance, full script and all, and be able to do that all the way through comfortably without having to look at your hands, without having to, what comes next, think about what you're gonna say, without having to think about what the next thing that your hands are gonna do and the effect is, right? You need to be able to just run through this stuff without even thinking about it. So that's the second thing now. So the first thing, practice the individual techniques. The second thing is script and um, routine your whole effect, put everything together. Another thing that I like to do is record myself performing the effect. So I'll, I'll set up my camera, I'll record myself running through my whole presentation so that I can look back at it. I can see where the slip ups are, where the flashes are, right? All that stuff. Uh, maybe performing it in front of a mirror too so you can get some different angles. Maybe I'll face this way and I'll perform it like this now so that I can see what it looks like from this side. And then maybe I'll perform it like this now so I can see what it looks like from this side, right? So putting all of that stuff together, and guess what? We're not even finished yet. There's actually a third part. This is the part that most of us don't know about, most of us maybe take for granted, and that is going out into the real world and actually uh, performing this for people, right? So you're not gonna get any better until you've had those interactions with people. There are gonna be times that you're out and you're performing and someone sees something because you're at uh, a, a bad angle or whatever, right? Or maybe uh, there's times when I'm performing and an audience member might say something and I'm like, dude, that's so funny, that's perfect. Why didn't I think of that, right? So you have these interactions with people and that's gonna make you a better, all, a better overall performer. So um, what comes along with that practice now too is you're practicing not just the, the trick and the performance, but you're practicing having these interactions with people. You're practicing going out and being able to interact with people, have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, right? Because it's not just about the trick itself that you perform, but it's about the interactions that you have, how you make people feel, are you funny, are you a very serious performer that's gonna make them feel some kind of emotion, right? This isn't the kind of stuff that you could practice looking at yourself in a mirror or practicing one-on-one -on -one with the camera, right? So just to kind of reiterate, the three steps of practice, uh, you gotta practice the individual technique, you gotta routine everything together and practice the full story with your script and everything, and you need to go out into the real world and you need to road test it. You need to do test and adjust, maybe something that you thought was gonna play really well, doesn't really play too well in the real world, right? So all of this stuff is going to build your confidence. So I already see someone in the comments here. Ian Galloway, what's up, buddy? He says, what's Riz? What's that PG related for? It's not PG related for anything. It's short for charisma, having charisma, right? Uh, usually uh, when says someone says, oh, you're gonna go Riz them up, usually what they mean is like, you're gonna go hit on them or you're gonna, um, you're gonna turn on your charm, right? We're not talking about turning on our charm for the sake of like flirting. We're talking about turning on our charm and being charismatic in our magic performance. So rizzing up our audience, right? Because if you can do that, you can have a really gauging performance. So thank you so much for asking. That's a great question. Um, now, uh, let's see, we've talked about being prepared and looking smart, right? Dressing smart, wearing nice clothes, uh, taking care of our hair, making sure that we're clean shaven, uh, all of that stuff, right? Looking presentable. Um, let's see, there was another thing I wanted to talk about too. What was it? 
I left my notes in the magic shop, wouldn't you believe that? I had a whole thing prepared. And then I got over here and I'm like, where's my notes? Right? Be prepared. That's that's the Boy Scout motto. And that's one of the <laughs> points in this in this discussion. But um Oh yes. So uh, when you're going out into the real world and you're practicing your, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You're practicing your interactions with people, right? It's really, really important to get a lot of reps in on this because <clears throat> for me personally, I'm a very shy individual. I know it doesn't seem like that. And maybe to some extent, I'm not so shy anymore. Like I can walk up to any of these people here and just start having a conversation with them right now. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Uh, Michael, nice to meet you. What, what are you up to today? You guys having fun? You know, whatever. And that's just because I have gotten so used to interacting with people as a Disneyland cast member, uh, interacting with people as a performer, as a magician. You just get so used to having these interactions with people. So if you're a very shy individual that doesn't make eye contact and is looking at your hands a lot when you're performing, and you're not really quite making eye contact, you're not really being big, right? You want to be big when you're performing. You don't want to be small. You want to, because the more open you are, the more honest you are, right? The more, uh, the less things you have to hide. So having this really engaging performance is going to also, believe it or not, it's going to also increase your misdirection, right? So if I'm just kind of small and I'm performing card tricks like this and okay go ahead and put the card back now and give the cards a little shuffle and stuff all of the heat and all of the focus is on what I'm doing because that's where I'm focused in on right the chances of misdirecting them now they're like out the window like everything is just focused in on exactly what it is that you are doing right so what you want to do instead is you want to open up you want to take some of the heat off yourself and put it on other people. So, hey, so-and-so, so nice to meet you. Let me ask you a favor, my friend. What do you do for a living professionally? Uh, are you a salesperson? You're a teacher? What do you do, right? And now they're talking. And while they're talking, maybe I'm doing something. Maybe I did my pass at that moment. Or um, maybe I needed to get their card out of the deck and stick it in my pocket, right? I'm telling you, there's times where I don't even do a move. Let's just say I want the card out of the deck and in my pocket so I can give them the deck and sh have them shuffle the cards. I swear, I'll take the card, I'll control it to the top, I'll be talking, and people are just like laughing and I'm just like, dude, isn't that hilarious? And like right there, I just stuck it in my pocket. Not even a move. I just took the card off and I stuck it in my pocket, right? And you're having these interactions with people, everyone's laughing. There's times where they're having so much fun that now I gotta reel it in. I gotta be like, okay, no, no, seriously though, guys, come back, see, see what I'm doing here. And you gotta kind of bring it back in, right? So having this fun, engaging performance is just gonna make it a lot easier for you to be able to perform slights, uh, to be able to misdirect people, and to just get away with doing a lot of stuff that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So here's a story for you. Uh, I was giving a magic lesson. Uh, one of my students, we met at a restaurant and I was doing a magic lesson with him at a restaurant and he was really concerned with making sure that he learned a really solid, invisible card control, right? And the one that he wanted to learn was the pass. Now, I've talked about the pass on this channel a lot. I'm not the best at performing the pass. In fact, my pass looks pretty subpar compared to how it probably could look, right? So I motivate my pass, I do extra stuff, but I was like, dude, you don't even have to control the cards. You could just stick the card right on top of the deck and they wouldn't even know as long as you are having an engaging performance, you have that charisma behind it, right? So what I did was I asked the server, I said, can I trouble you for just a moment? I just wanna try something with a deck of cards. All you have to do is just pick a card and I'm gonna see if I could find it, right? And you let me know what you thought of the trick. Is that okay? They were like, yeah, sure, why not? So I'm like, here, go ahead and take out a card. Perfect, thank you so much. And your name, your name is Cindy, right? Cindy, would you do me a favor? Cindy, go ahead and put the card back on there. Now, I have to be honest with you, this is kind of a new trick that I'm doing, but uh, if I was to like just wiggle my fingers over the cards and click my fingers and your card came up to the top, would that be cool? And she freaked out, she reacted, right? And I was like, was that cool? And she was like, yeah, I loved it. I was like, oh, thank you so much. And then she went back to, back to work, right? And I looked at the guy and I was like, you see? And he was like, dude, you didn't even do anything. You just, you had her put her card back and you just 
cut it to the top of the deck. I was like, yes, but it wasn't about what I was doing with her cards. It was about getting her excited about what was gonna happen, right? Would you be excited if I just put the card into the deck, I wiggled my fingers, I clicked my fingers, and it came up to the top, right? She was more excited about what was gonna happen than focusing on what it was that I was doing in the moment, right? So the lesson to take away from this is that your performance and how you interact with your audience can go a long way to helping with the misdirection and covering up your slides or whatever else, taking the heat off of you, right? And the last thing that I wanna talk about in this video, I'll field some questions from you guys if there are any, right? If you have questions, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, if you're watching this live, I'll answer it right now in this video. And if you're watching the replay, I will go ahead and respond to those comments in the comment section. But um, the last thing, honestly, and this is a really big one, and I think a lot of magicians overlook this. <clears throat> I know I overlooked this for the longest time. But um, be kind. Be kind to your audience. There's a lot of times I'll go to a magic show and the whole point of the magic show seems to be to bring audience members up on stage to humiliate them and make the magician look really good, right? And what that does is that alienates your audience. There's a difference between being charismatic and having a really outgoing personality. There's a difference between that and being, um, uh, I don't wanna say being an asshole, but really that's what it is, right? It's, it's like, there's a word for it, I'm trying to think. If you can think of it, let me know in the comment section below, but there's a word for it. Uh, arrogant, maybe, I think is the word that I'm looking for. There's a difference between being arrogant and being charismatic, right? Arrogance is thinking that you're better uh, or smarter or whatever than, than your audience is, <clears throat> whereas um, being charismatic is knowing that you're better but not not having to say that, right? You're you're having fun with your audience, you're bringing them in, you're having them experience the magic with you. You're inviting people on stage and you're making them the star of the show, right? Um, having that charisma and the courage to be able to do that, your audience is clapping when the spectator does something, really the clapping for you, right? Because obviously you orchestrated this whole thing. So being kind to your audience, inviting them up, making them the star of the show, that's gonna go a long way, right? Um, versus bringing them up and um, making fun of them or making them the butt of the joke or whatever, right? So we got a couple of uh, comments coming in here. David Smith says, thanks for all your magic videos. You're really appreciated. I appreciate you, David. Thanks so much, buddy. Uh, we all need magic in our lives. It's very true. It's very true. Ian says, I made a great point. I don't know what exactly point that was that I made that was great. I hope all of them, <laughs> but um, yeah, oh, another thing that you could do too, uh, and, and this, you have to kind of be careful. You have to be careful with it, and it only works for certain individuals, but self-deprecating humor can be fun and charismatic, right? Bringing the heat kind of in on yourself and making fun of yourself a little bit can be very charismatic because what that shows your audience is that you don't take yourself too seriously and you're not, uh, you're not self-conscious, you're not hiding anything, you're not afraid. Uh, to have a little bit of fun with yourself, right? So for me, some of this self-deprecating humor might be like um, a trick that goes wrong or something. And I might say something along the lines of, well, yeah, I, I screwed up. You know, I, that's what you get for, you know, spending 30, 30 hours a week practicing something. Um, and you know what, things go wrong. It is what it is, right? Uh, but you know, so-and-so, thank you so much for for helping me with that. Your bit was great, you know. A lot better than mine. She's probably um, probably gonna go now, but you know what, here, so-and-so, you take my spot. Uh, you did a lot better than me. You go ahead and entertain them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna peace out, right? And you like, you know, you just make it like, make it fun. So, self-deprecating humor that shits too much on yourself though, <laughs> can, can come off a little desperate, like, Oh yeah, you know, I'm really lonely. You know, I wish I had a girlfriend, but you know, I'm a magician and yeah, magicians are creepy and we don't get laid, we don't get dates. So uh, yeah, are there any girls out there that would be interested? No, no one's interested in dating me. Yeah, I know, I'm kind of ugly, right? Like you don't want to be doing that. <laughs> now now you're, you've gone from having charisma to being whiny and complaining and you don't want to do that. 
but a little bit of self-deprecating humor where you make yourself the butt of the joke um, can also go a long way to being charismatic. So um, let's see here. Ian says, the magician antagonizing the audience. Yeah, um, being antagonistic, that's gonna breed hecklers, which I see David's comment about hecklers. We're gonna roll into that now. Uh, but before I do, nine times out of 10, whenever we get heckled, what I normally notice is the magician creates this antagonistic environment of them versus the audience. And that is why a lot of the time, I'm not saying every time, sometimes you just, you'll get hecklers naturally. It happens to everybody. But a lot of the time, what you do or what you say is gonna breed hecklers, right? So for example, let's just say you're doing a gambling routine, right? And it's like, yeah, we're gonna play, we're gonna play for money, right? I'm always gonna win, you're always gonna lose, you're gonna give me all your money because I'm the magician and I'm a lot smarter than you, right? A lot of the times that'll happen. Uh, you'll, you'll see some kind of setup premise like that. That's why my, my chop cup routine, you guys may have noticed when I do my chop cup routine, it's never, it's never like, do you think it's in my pocket or under the cup or in my hand, right? Where do you think it is? Oh no, it's not there, you're wrong. Like I never do that because now they're, they're looking to catch me, right? Instead, what you do is you make it this fun game. Like, yeah, I'm gonna put the ball in the cup, take the ball out of the cup, put it in my pocket, right? It's not in my hand, but wouldn't you know it? There's the ball there. It's invisible. And I just toss it underneath the cup, just like this, right? And now the ball's into the cup, right? That is a lot more fun and engaging and you're bringing people in. Would you like to try here? You hold the cup in your hands, right? Rather than, is it under the cup? Is it in my pocket? Is it in my hand? Oh, you got it wrong. You owe me $10 now. And it's like, all right. And you do that over and over and over again. And now people are gonna start giving you a hard time, right? Or don't do the whole, go ahead and hold out your hand for me. No, not that one, the clean one. Oh, I guess that was the clean one, right? Like, don't do any of that crap. Number one, those are like hack lines that people that don't really think they're act through, they don't have any creativity, they just steal these lines from other people because they heard other magicians doing it, right? Don't do that. Um, be original, be clever, right? If you're gonna do the dad jokes and stuff, have them be lighthearted and silly. Like, I'll do the dad jokes. I do a lot of the, you know, uh, can you find the soft spot? You know, we went to the linking ranks. Can you find the soft spot anywhere? There is one soft spot right there, right? Like I'll do the dad jokes and stuff, but I'm not doing the, you know, um, hey, stupid, you want to help me with the trick? Like none of that stuff, right? So um, before I get into hecklers, um, Garrett's in here, he says, great points, thank you so much. Ian says, depends on the situation. Yeah, so let's talk about hecklers, right? I did a whole video on hecklers, by the way, so after you're done watching this, if you guys wanna dig into the uh, advice for magicians playlist, uh, I have a whole, there's a few videos actually, I think that I've done, like two or three videos talking about hecklers. But the way that I handle hecklers, it kinda of does depend on the situation. I do ignore them at first, because sometimes they'll say something stupid They'll try to, oh, it's two cards, whatever. I'll just power through it, and then sometimes they'll just go away. When they don't just go away, and they keep, no, 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 let me see the cards, there's two cards, or whatever, right? Now, usually what I'll do is I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that they're not necessarily trying to ruin the show or be rude or be mean, but maybe something I've said or done or something that they've seen in the past has clued them in to, oh, the way that this works is the magician's gonna try to trick me and I gotta try to catch him, right? And for me, that's not what magic's about. It's about being entertained, right? Imagine going to a movie theater and you're watching Captain America, right? Or Iron Man or whatever, some Marvel movie. You're watching a Marvel film. And rather than sitting back and enjoying it the whole time, you're trying to pick out where the green screen is or telling everyone, ah, it's not real, it's, it's fake. He's not really, Iron Man's not really flying, it's CGI, right? Imagine doing that to yourself while you're watching a Marvel film, right? That's what a lot of people think watching a magic show is, and really it shouldn't be like that. And a lot of the fault of that is our fault, um, that we breed this kind of 
environment, this atmosphere where people think the point of watching the magic show is to have to figure out what we're doing, right? And that's just not the case. Instead, it should be like watching a film, right? You're gonna laugh, you're gonna cry, you're gonna feel some kind of emotion, um, something fun's gonna happen. They get to come in and be involved with it. They get to see something impossible happen. And in many cases, they get to do the impossible themselves. That's what a magic show should be. Uh, it shouldn't be, you know, unless, unless people are into like humiliation or something, like maybe that's their kink, I don't know. Uh, if you're into that, you know, <laughs> then maybe go to a magic show where the magician brings you up on stage and humiliates you the whole time. Maybe you might be into that. But most audiences are not. Most audiences want to feel good about themselves. They don't want to feel stupid, right? So, <clears throat> not breeding this kind of environment. So, going back to what I was saying about uh, the guy that's like, oh, that's two cards. Maybe they just think that that's part of it, that they're supposed to call out the magician because that's the game that they're trying to play, right? So what I'll usually do in that situation is I'll say, hey buddy, you know what? Why don't you come help me with a trick and, and we're gonna do something cool together we're gonna show them something cool, right? And now I'll kind of bring them in to be like my, my assistant. I'll perform the magic trick for them, but have them be the one that like the magic is happening for, right? So now they're less inclined to like call out what I'm doing because they're doing the trick, right? And there's often times where I'll have someone heckling me and calling out what I'm doing. I'll be like, hey, dude, come right over here. You want to you help me with the next one? I'll tell you what, stand right over here so the audience can see you. And uh, we're going to have you uh, do the magic this time. Okay, you're going to pick a card. You're going to show it to them. I'm going to have you put it in the deck. You're going to shuffle the cards. Go ahead and give the cards a, a nice mix, whatever. Perfect. And then you're going to do the magic move. And I want you to turn over the card. And this time it's going to work in your own hands. Would that be a cool trick? Everyone, do you think that would be a cool trick? Yeah, perfect, right? And so now they do the move, they turn the card over and it worked for them in their own hands and now they are freaking out. A lot of the times that guy is now like my new best friend <laughs> in that audience. They've gone from being a heckler to being one of my biggest advocates. And that goes back again to having charisma, right? If you just get angry and start yelling at them, shut the fuck up, don't heckle me, blah, blah, blah. Like all that's gonna do is make you look weak, it's gonna make you look whiny, and it's gonna mean that the heckler has won what they wanted to do, which was to get a rise out of you, right? But if you take that and you spin it around and you make them the star of the show, and then everyone claps for them, and then you have them go back to their seat, how awesome is that? That not only was that person picking on you, right? But you didn't let it get to you you turned it around on them and you made them the heckler, the star of the show, right? So imagine that. Um, that's what having charisma is all about. It's about having the confidence in yourself to be able to do that. Now, let's just say I do all that and the guy's still being a dick. It's at that point that I'll be like, all right, man, well, I mean, if you're just trying to ruin it for yourself, I don't know what to tell you, you know, but we're just here having a good time, you know, just have fun, dude, like, come on doing we're not taking this too seriously like like do you think that i'm like look at me man i'm i'm dressed like this i'm wearing a freaking newsboy hat and i have a deck of cards i'm playing with 52 pieces of paper for you right now like you know like let's just have fun right you agree we should just have fun come on man don't ruin it for them they're they're just trying to have fun nine times out of ten it's never had to get to that part the only time that i really have to then take it a step further is if the person is drunk or they're like with their girlfriend or wife and they feel, I don't know, belittled or their ego is so big that they have to prove that they're the smartest guy in the room, which nine times out of 10, that person right there is a very insecure person. These are like your Andrew Tates of the world, right? People that feel the need to be the smartest person in the room and let everyone know that they're the smartest person in the room. Those are oftentimes the most insecure people. So, um, if it ever gets to this point, which very rarely, I couldn't remember the last time I've ever had to do this, but if it ever gets to this point where they're just completely being a jerk and they're shutting everything down, just be like, all right, man, I'm going to have to ask you to leave the group and uh, I think you're done. And if they don't want to leave, well, I guess I'm done then. And I guess, you know, we kind of ruined the show for everyone, didn't we? And, um, that's it. Be like, man, I don't know what to tell you, dude. I gave you opportunity after opportunity and you're still up here being an asshole. So I don't know, to, I don't know what to say, man. Like, yeah, I think you're done. You think you can go sit down and behave? 
perfect. Go ahead and go sit down and behave. Good boy. Thank you so much. And then you make it like a little joke, right? And then you move move back into the routine. Um, but I've never had to do that. The one thing I would advise against, unless you're super quick-witted, you're like Gazo or Cosmo or one of these street guys that's, you know, you're doing this so much, you got that quick wit and you can handle it. Directly engaging the spectator, I would avoid doing. Um, and when, when I say directly engaging them, I mean picking a fight back with them. They're picking a fight with you, so you snap back at them with, with some sarcastic comment, and then they make a sarcastic comment, and then you hit them with another one. Like, I would avoid doing that unless you really know what you're doing because you run into this, this trap now where the audience might turn against you and take the heckler's side because now it's you versus the heckler, and you just don't want to do that, right? But the moral of this whole situation is... If you can have a confident performance, you're confident in yourself, you're having fun with everyone, you're probably not gonna have hecklers. And if you do get a heckler, you can kind of flip it around and in many instances, even bring them on your side. And they go and they're like, bro, you gotta see the magician. This guy is so cool. Do the trick that you did with me, man, where like the card jumped to the top and it like blew my mind. And this guy was heckling me during the act, right? So it is possible, it really is. You just have to have that confidence. And you're not gonna have that confidence if you've not practiced, if you've not gone out into the real world and field tested this stuff, because you're not gonna have those hecklers engaging you if you're just sitting in your room practicing your double lift over and over again, right? You gotta go out into the real world and you gotta, you gotta field test this stuff. So let's see who else is in here. Um, ba -ba -ba. Xavier's in here. Thank you so much for being a member and always joining us these uh, weekends for these sessions. Xavier, I really, really appreciate it. it. says, hecklers equals haters. They're everywhere. Sometimes they are haters. Sometimes they're just being dicks. Uh, other times they just don't know any better. And I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, magic in a bar is probably difficult at times. I guess especially when people are drinking a little too much. Yes, when people have been drinking, um, it can be very difficult to perform for them. Performing bar magic in general is hard. You really have to be able to command your audience. You have to... You have to have that quick wit almost up front before you get hecklers and you have to bring them in and get them on your side like right away. Again, especially if they've been having drinks, right? And especially if you're performing at the bar and the bartender's literally right there <laughs> making drinks and stuff. Uh, it could be really hard working in a bar. But I agree, it is all about confidence. <laughs> if they still heckling, that's when Mike throws hands. No, I don't, I don't throw hands. There is uh, Weston Ding. Again, Weston, thank you so much for being here. Weston's in here all the time too. And thank you for being a member, Weston. Um, there is also similarly, similarly, bleh, I can't talk today, related behavioral management techniques. Yes, so um, yeah, there are all these different ways that you can kind of control a situation without giving in, giving them what they want and being, you know, because like for, here's it, I'll go back to Andrew Tate again. We'll use Andrew Tate as a perfect example. He made some stupid tweet about Greta Thunberg and he's like, oh, I got all these cars and you know, the gas emissions are crazy on my cars. I'll let you know about my cars or whatever. So the, te with the, the tweet was already like, you know, like shrimp energy anyway, because uh, he was bragging about himself, right? So that's not charismatic to be bragging about yourself. So he was already doing that. And then she fired back with a really snappy response that made him look stupid, right? So what he should have done at this point now is just not said anything and just taken the L. But what he did was he dug his heels in and he like made a whole video about it and crying about her and how, you know, she's stupid and like all that stuff, right? And that's just whiny, 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 right? So think of it in magic terms now. Imagine I made this joke about how I'm so much smarter or better or have more money or I'm dressed nicer or my hands are not dirty but yours are to the audience. And then the audience member has a quick snap back. Well, now the audience is on their side because I was being a jerk to them. And now I gotta kind of recover that. And so if I dig my heels in and oh yeah, well, Blah, 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 and you know, I have a Lamborghini in my backyard and blah, 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 where's your Bugatti? And like all this stuff, right? Now I, I, I don't have that charisma anymore. 
now I just look like a whiny crybaby. So, yeah, definitely. Um, knowing your magic inside out is key. Yes. Um, I saw your thing, Wes, and I'm gonna get to your thing too in a second. Uh, knowing your magic inside out is key. I 100% agree um, because you're not confident with what you're doing with your hands and you have to look at what your hands are doing and everything. You're not now performing out to your audience. You're not being big, like I said, you're being little and focusing just on what your hands are doing, right? So being big, moving around, commanding your audiences and stuff, this is gonna make your performance a lot more engaging. You're making eye contact with people as you're talking to them, right? Not talking down to the floor, all of this stuff. So going back to what Weston said now, Weston's just a cautionary note. I would refrain from using those examples. They're not always what you think they are. Not quite sure exactly what you're talking about. If you can uh, clarify what you're talking about, Weston, that'd be awesome. Um, so, before Weston comes back with what he's talking about, we'll probably finish on Weston's comment. Um, with When Weston comes back, we'll probably chat about that and then it'll be the end of this video. Oh, the Tate Dunberg thing? Yeah, that's fine. So, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I lost my train of thought now. It's okay though. So, there's this new thing that YouTube is doing now where you can gift memberships to people. I don't know exactly how it works, but you guys are welcome to look into that if you want. Uh, you're welcome to support if you're not already doing so. It's just $1 a month to support me. You'll get early access to videos when I post uh, regular content on the channel. If it's a video that goes out and um, is uh, like a premiere video, you'll get early access to that in the early access playlist. For $5 a month, You'll also get access to the tutorials playlist, so you'll learn stuff here on my channel that I have behind the paywall. And also, um, for $100 a month, you'll get access to me one-on-one, -on -one, where I will be able to work with you on things that you're working on, answer direct questions with you either over the phone, or I can do one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions with you if you wanna learn some new magic, or if you want help uh, taking something that you're already working on and improving on it or adding to it or whatever. Maybe you just need help you know, hey, how does my past look? Can we work on this? Can you give me some pointers? Stuff like that. I'll be more than happy to help you guys with that. All of that stuff can be found in the membership tab. So, Xavier says, I remember Paul Harris in an interview mentioned his magic was getting so routine to make it different. He'd antagonize the audience just to see if he could win them back. Yeah, I mean, if you're Paul Harris and you have nothing better to do, I mean, I, I guess maybe. Um, I have my cat Tubbs with me. He likes to stream too. Nice. Thanks Tubbs. I appreciate you, buddy. Garrett Jones says, do you think a quick lighthearted mention of the principle of suspending disbelief regarding movie audiences and magic audiences might help avoid a problem with hecklers? Yeah, I mean, I do it. Uh, I usually don't bring it up unless like someone's starting to heckle, but yeah, I mean, you could, you could do that. You can just simply say like, hey buddy, you know, like, hey, we're all having fun, man. It's like, it's like going to watch your favorite movie, right? You don't want to be that guy that ruins the ending for everybody else. Maybe you've already seen the movie. You already know how it ends. You don't have to tell everyone else how it ends, right? Just let them, let them enjoy the film, right? We're, we're here doing magic tricks. Like I'm not, I'm not claiming to be Jesus. I'm not curing, curing leprosy or doing miracles, right? We're just doing card tricks here. And then if you make it lighthearted enough and fun, like they'll probably leave you alone, right? So, Weston says, I will definitely look for people to gift memberships to the gift of magic. Yeah, so I'm not 100% sure exactly how it works. I wanna say it's random. I don't know if you can choose who you give the memberships to, but that's something that YouTube is doing now. You can gift subs on, um, on Twitch. I know that you can do gifted subs and then like people will randomly, congratulations, you got like a one month membership for free or whatever because that other person gifted the sub for them. So um, I know that that's how it works on Twitch. I'm not 100% sure how it's working on YouTube now, but it's a brand new thing. Um, so you can do that. Uh, in these live streams that I'm doing too, if you, if you don't want to be a member, but you want to show support anyway, you can always do a super chat or leave a donation in here. 
my job, my goal is to be able to make these videos for basically minimum wage, <laughs> the amount of time and effort it takes for me to edit and everything like that. Doing these live streams is a little bit easier for me because I don't really have to edit anything. So that helps a lot. But anything you guys want to donate, super helpful. I, I do all this advice for magician stuff for free. So if you guys want to help me out, if you guys want to help me out, <laughs> that'd be awesome. No sweat if you don't. Uh, if you can't help financially, that's fine too. Even just uh, sharing my content, letting other people know about my channel, it goes a long way to helping me out. So I really appreciate that. Managing hecklers is a skill to develop, not just for magicians, but comedians, speakers, etc. Yeah, and like I said at the very beginning of this whole thing, the only way you can do that is going out into the real world and practicing, right? So if you've not gotten up off your couch, if you've not gotten up from behind your mirror and gone out into the real world to perform, you're not gonna get better, right? And not just as a, a performer, but just as someone that interacts with people in general, right? Um, again, I was always that guy at a party that, you know, would sit on the couch, I have my drink in my hand, I'd be staring at my cup, looking around with my eyes, being like, uh, I really hope someone comes and talks to me because I'm nervous and I don't know how to break the ice. So maybe if they start talking to me, I can come out of my shell and talk to them. I was always that guy. But now, you put me in a party, dude, I'm Mr. What's up, bro? How's it going, man? Ah, oh, this cool party, huh? Like, who are you here with? Are you here with so-and-so? Oh, man, I love so-and-so. That guy's cool. Whatever, right? Like, I'm that guy now. And I was, I never thought that I would be that guy. And the only reason that I'm that guy now is because I've gotten so comfortable just talking to people. And again, I don't want to be a broken record. Uh, yeah, at Peggy's party. <laughs> I don't want to be a broken record. But you're not going to be able to do that unless you go out and you and you uh, talk to people, right? David says, do you think doing magic for kids can be difficult at times? Children's magic is a whole nother beast. I'm probably not gonna have time in this video to talk about it. Um, but performing for children is a lot different than performing for adults. And it's mostly because children already believe in magic. You don't really have to fool them, but you do have to entertain them, right? If you spend too much time performing for children, set stuff up, and build up the story and do all these convincers to show the box that you're using is a real box, they are gonna lose all interest. Instead with kids, what you have to do is you have to keep them engaged. Maybe next time I'll do, <clears throat> I'll do a video on how to perform for kids, but you gotta keep them, keep them engaged. You gotta, you gotta kind of heckle the kids a little bit. It's kind of backwards thinking like, you, oh, you don't wanna heckle them or they'll heckle you, but you kind of want the kids to heckle you, right? Not in like, I know how you did it, you're not fooling me kind of way, but here's a perfect example. There's a theory in children's entertainment called look, don't see. Basically what that means is um, you are not seeing something that's happening, but all of the kids see it and so they call it out. So let's just say I have a, a red ball and I put it in my hand and I say, when I open my hand, the ball is now gonna be blue, right? So I put the red ball in my hand and I go, what do you know, but now the ball is blue, but it's not, it's still a red ball, nothing has changed. Well, the, the, the kids in the audience, no, it's still red. I'm gonna be like, I know, isn't that cool? It's a little blue ball now, isn't that cool? You got, you saw it, right? You saw how the ball changed from red to blue. And you're like, no, it's blue, it's not blue, it's red, right? And, and you're kind of having that kind of play with them. And the whole time you're holding it behind you so that you can't see it. And you're like, no, it's red or it's blue or whatever, right? And then they're arguing with you, they're, they're giving it back to you, right? With kids, you kind of want that sort of interaction. You want them to be directly involved. Otherwise, if they're just a quiet spectator that's just sitting there watching, they're gonna get really bored. And of course, I'm talking about little kids, like five, seven, eight-year-old kids. When they start getting older, they're in their teens, their early teens, right? That's a whole different story. But for little kids, it can be, it can be, it can be a beast. So, Playoff heckling as lighthearted as possible, like as though you're in on it. Something like, hey, we're just here to have fun or chill. It's just a trick, right? Yeah, so having it be like like they're in on it, that's another way that you could do it too. If someone's heckling, you could be like, hey man, what did I tell you? Don't, don't, not not yet, man. At the end, at the end, remember? We set this up before. Sorry, that's, that's my cousin. He doesn't, he doesn't know how to behave, right? 
playing it off like that too can be fun and they can get the hint like oh this guy's telling me to chill but you also don't appear bothered by it either it's kind of it looks almost like oh it's like this inside joke right uh weston says david smith richard rebuffo and michael o'brien had a great conversation on this a few years ago yeah there's a video again in the advice for magicians playlist where i talk about children's magic and how to perform and i think i have richard i have a couple of other people on my channel talking about this too but you guys can go check that out as well this would be a good topic to have um <clears throat> This would be a good topic of discussion to have on one of these live stream things. I think maybe I might dive a little bit deeper into this next time. Xavier says, uh, Peggy's party. Yeah, we already talked about that. Um, David says, thanks, Weston. Xavier says, introvert or extrovert? Not sure who you're talking to on that. Me? Um, I al always was an introvert. Now I'm more of an extrovert. I'm a chatty Kathy now. Magic has boosted my social skills, like approaching, creating interest. And concluding, maybe even communicating, I'm not sure. It really teaches me how to speak to where I'm confident public, uh, I'm confident publicly speaking. Yes, like right now I'm doing this video with you guys. And although I look away from the camera, I look down a lot, right? Like I'm trying to think about what I want to say and stuff. Um, I would not be able to even do what I'm doing right now if it wasn't for magic and going out and being engaging and practicing, right? Even people that are like Twitch streamers or YouTubers or whatever, they don't get comfortable on camera like this overnight. This is a skill that definitely takes practice, right? I remember you slaughter a balloon animal in front of kids. That was down. Make the balloon dog and then stepped on it and popped it and had all the kids freaking out. Yeah, that's a doggy bag by... Is it Wayne Hobson? Is it, there's Wayne, Wayne Dobson, right? It's Jeff Hobson. I always get Hobson and Dobson mixed up. It's Jeff Hobson, I believe, is who it's by. Don't quote me on that. Look it up just in case I'm wrong. But it's a trick called Doggy Bag and it's hilarious. You guys should check it out. But I think that is it for now. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining me in this live stream. Uh, I really, really appreciate you. Last comment, David says, late great magician Aldo Condomini was great at dealing with hecklers. He was very quick-witted. Yeah, unless you're like Aldo or Gazzo or one of these guys that's like super quick. I would avoid directly engaging hecklers, but you know, as long as you, as long as you are able to have fun and be lighthearted with people and just bring them into your world of magic and have confidence in your performance, that charisma is gonna go a long way in connecting you with your audience. And your audience is gonna go a long way going, yeah, man, that guy, that Michael Bryan guy, he was pretty cool, man. That was a fun show, I really enjoyed that. Rather than having your audiences walk away going, man, that Michael O'Brien guy, he was a good magician, but he's kind of a dick, wasn't he? Like, you don't want, <laughs> right? You don't want that reaction. You want, you want it to be like, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I had a good time at that show. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. I gotta get back to work now because I'm on my lunch. But I will see you guys next time with some more advice for magicians. Thank you so much to those who joined for the live session. If you haven't already done so, subscribe so you don't miss out next time I go live. I try to do these on the weekends. Uh, so you guys, as many of you are off from work or school as possible. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time, okay? Later, Tate.